Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to do a review of the latest non-fiction book I've read. Whoops. The Nine. Uh, Inside the Secret World of the Supreme Court by Jeffrey Tubin. I believe it's T-O-O-B-I-N. I think it's Tubin. Um, and this book does an excellent job of giving an overview of how the Supreme Court functions. And I found it, I found it fascinating. Um, it's a much more loose structure than I actually originally imagined. Um, and that's, you know, I never did the research myself, so now I could have known more than I did. Uh, and it does touch a little bit on the past of the uh, Supreme Court. It, it, it re references some earlier decisions that, as they pertain to the modern Supreme Court. Um, but mostly this covers the living justices, those that have been put on the bench in the last, you know, 30 years, uh, up through Alito. I think Alito was the last judge that this book covers um, entering, the, entering the court. And while the book does discuss the fact that there have been times in the past 30 odd years when the court has been more or less liberal, not by any definition of the word liberal I would use. Because the current court as it stands, as far as I am concerned, is nothing but an auxiliary of the Republican Party, handing out decision after decision after decision that benefits corporations and moneyed interests that want to control our government and undermining the civil liberties and freedoms of American individual citizens. So I'm, I'm not happy with our current court and this book did nothing to improve my mood because it went into some detail about you know the individual justices and the, why they hold the positions they hold and how they express them and how their opinions and views of the world have affected the decisions they've made and the calls they've made for the cases that have been presented to the court um, and of course the you've got Alito, Roberts, Scalia, and the most conservative of them all, Thomas. Now, I found it interesting that Thomas is actually the most well-liked justice by the people that work in the court. He knows everyone's names. He knows their kids. He's interested in their lives. He's warm. He's personable. And he is absolutely and completely out of his mind. He is an originalist to such an extent that Scalia once said, I may be an originalist, but I'm not crazy, in reference to Thomas. So if Scalia thinks that you are too much of an originalist, you're too much of an originalist. In fact, I am just stunned that Thomas hasn't advocated for returning um, all black Americans to slavery. Because, you know, when the Constitution was put into effect, they were all in slavery. And I would imagine he would gladly slap a collar around his own neck. Because that is how much he believes that the original Constitution should never, ever, ever be changed for any reason. Regardless if it makes no sense not to. So, this book gives you all the information you're going to need about the current court. Major issues on abortion, freedom of speech, um... Miranda writes, things like that. They, they talk about some major hot-button cases, how the court broke down their votes, why they broke down their votes, the people that wrote the opinions on them, the, pe the people that wrote the dissenting opinions. So this book has all that information and more. I think it was probably just a smidge long. I think a little editing could have trimmed this down and made it a little, little uh, more uh, fast-paced and more interesting. But well worth your time if you have any interest in the judiciary branch of the U.S. government and its highest court. Now you see, I've always considered the court should be the advocate for the American people. We need someone to represent the American people so that the minority is not oppressed by the majority and so that the American citizen is not exploited by either the, either, the, either the private sector or the U.S. government. And this court fails miserably at that task. I want someone to be the adult in the room, and I would really like the court to be that adult in the room. 
because the, legisl the legislative branch isn't the, the adult in the room. The executive branch isn't the adult in the room. Both of them pander to people who have lots of money. So I was really hoping that, you know, we'd have the judiciary branch and they would be the adult in the room. No such luck. They pander to the wealthy as well. So if you're interested in politics and in the court system, read this book. If you would prefer not to become enraged by how conservative this court is, if you are of a liberal progressive mind, you might want to skip it. But if you are a conservative, you will love this book. Because it will tell you over and over again how the conservative movement is the one that should be followed. Because that is what most of our justices on the Supreme Court believe. Much to my chagrin.